Hello everyone, my name is Joanne Mota and I am the founder and festival director of the Uptown Women's Film Festival of New York. And this is Chats with a Working Woman, an interview series I created to inspire, inform, and hopefully learn something new. <laughs> Today I'm, I am chatting with a working woman in publishing. She is a children's author, a singer, an illustrator, a publisher, the creator of the Dafty and Friends book series, and one of the recipients of the American Express 100 for 100 program, where she was awarded a grant for her to fund her publishing company. Please welcome Anna Gilchrist. Hi, Anna. Hi, how are you? <laughs> Good, thank you so much for doing this. Um, uh, thank you for having me. I really appreciate you. I'm so excited here. to talk to you and learn more about your publishing company and about the grant you just received. So let's begin with, tell us about the American Express 100 for 100 program, which you were one of the 100, 100 lucky ladies to receive a grant. Uh, so yeah, it was one, it was a great surprise. Um, it began where I was uh, crowdfunding with this uh, organization called I Fund Women, which is uh, an amazing organization that helps women to raise money um, and backing and funding for their small businesses uh, so they can, you know, get on the good foot uh, regarding uh, having the funding as well as coaching and mentoring uh, to start their businesses successfully. And uh, they offer a ton of grants or, or basically they have a lot of information, a lot of workshops. And uh, one of the things that they informed me as well as so many women about was uh, this grant. Now granted, they didn't tell us who was, who was um, offering the grant, nor did we know the amount. They just kind of put it out there. It's like, hey, this, uh, uh, amazing company is offering this amazing grant. Uh, we'd like you to go ahead and submit an application because we think you're a good fit for this. So I did. And I didn't think much, much of it because of course I'm, I was looking for funding, more funding because I'd already started a crowdfunding campaign with them and um, had just ended my crowdfunding. So I had a little bit of funding to go, but I was looking for a little bit more because I, I knew it was about to uh, be depleted and it was getting towards the holidays and I'm like, oh, this is getting a little rough. Um, so that just happens, you know, so it's just, you're just finding ways to fund your business. And then I was told that I was uh, selected as a finalist for a grant. Um, by this time, they told me what, where it was from, from American Express and how much it was for. And I was like, oh, wow, okay. So they set up a meeting, uh, which was on the 28th of October. And so we had a Zoom meeting and they asked me about my business, um, how I got into publishing and all of that great stuff. And then they surprised me with stating that I was a finalist, not only a finalist, but an actual recipient of the grant for the 100 for 100 program that they had. And I was shocked, but apparently they did this to 100, or excuse me, 99 more women. Um, I was one of 100 women that they selected. Uh, so it was, there was no final uh, selection process. It was more like we pick select, uh, we selected 100 women and you're receiving the grant. So um, it was Amazing. a pleasant surprise. <laughs> and um, I'm still, still, flabbergasted and quite shocked, but absolutely grateful that I received it because it just came in such a, a great time um, that I definitely really appreciated. So uh, yeah, that's how that came about and that's how I'm part of it. And part of it, it's not just a grant, it's also a hundred days of resources. So like a hundred days of like workshops and classes and mentorship, uh, which is gonna start in January of 2021. Uh, so that is, definitely something that is definitely worth it and highly uh, necessary. I think for any businesses to get the coaching and mentorship and resources necessary to continue to be successful in your business. And so. this is all through American Express or iPhone Women? The well, it's both workshop. actually. Yeah, it's, it's basically with both. I, American Express is um, offering the grant as well as the resources, but it's through an iPhone Women. Um, so they found 
uh, their recipients through iFundWomen. And um, it's collaborative. That's amazing. What is the difference from iFundWomen to like other uh, crowdfunding uh, websites? Platforms? Uh, so yeah, so I found women, it was uh, something that I was highly interested in because of their coaching and mentorship programs um, and workshops. They actually helped you through the process of crowdfunding, which was something that I wasn't finding with other crowdfunding campaigns, like with, uh, uh, not to name any, you know, not to be too critical of other campaign um, out there, which are all great. Uh, but with this, it was more like, we actually want you to succeed to raise money. And this is the process that you need to go through in order to do that. And they made it where it was like step by step, they give you like a spreadsheet, uh, so that you know how to come up with your pitch, um, create your contact list, figure out what your rewards are going to be, uh, figure out what, um, what your, the amount you actually need to raise and how, you know, to do the calculations for that. Um, and just a whole step-by-step -step process that I think any person who's trying to raise money is not really considering or thinking about until they're actually in it. And they're like, Oh, Oh my gosh. And it's so much to do, especially if you are a sole proprietor or an individual running a business, you don't have a team. It becomes extremely tasky. It, it's just a lot of, to ask for uh, for one person. So it's so helpful to have that coaching and that mentorship to help you but with the step-by-step -step process. They even have it where they help you set up the, the site uh, and help you set up a video and all types of different things just to make sure that you are set up for success, um, which is extremely valuable. I found extremely valuable and I think so many other women have found extremely valuable. Um, and it's uh, geared towards women, which uh, is a group of people that are highly becoming entrepreneurs, but do not get nearly as much funding um, as their male counterparts. So it's definitely something that I would highly recommend. Um, and I think the teaching and the mentorship and the coaching was absolutely non-questionable. It was absolutely something that was necessary. And I'm glad that I did, took part of it. Uh, yeah, crowdfunding is very, I mean, at least for me, I find it to be very difficult. So it's good to know that there are organizations or platforms like that, like iPhone Women. So yeah. tell me about your publishing company. How does one decide to be like, hey, I'm going to start a publishing company? Can people <laughs> email you like their uh, inquiry letters? Like, hey, I have a book. Can you publish it for me? Uh, not yet, because I'm just starting out, so the word's getting out slowly, but um, what I will say is that I, when I do talk about the fact that I wrote a children's book and uh, that I do have a publishing company, people are highly interested in it. like, oh, I, I have this idea for a children's book, and I've been thinking about it for, like, years and blah, 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 um, and I'm like, oh, very good. Like, let me know what's going on, like what your idea is. And if you would like, I would love to help you with the process because um, just the reality of it, I was, uh, when I was in, uh, excuse me, in graduate school, mm -hmm. I went to uh, graduate school abroad in the UK because I wanted to learn more about children's rights, which unfortunately is not something that's really uh, spoken of here in the US. Matter of fact, the US uh, is the only country in the world at the moment uh, that does not recognize, officially recognize the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child, which is a human rights document stating what the rights of children are, specifically mm -hmm. them as young people and what stipulations uh, need to be considered for governments to ensure that these rights are enforced for children. Uh, so I, I knew I'd have to go abroad to learn more about this. And so I went to the UK, I went to Wales, went to Swansea, Swansea University, um, with the Welsh, yeah, beautiful, beautiful country, highly recommend it. And, um, that's where, uh, while I was writing my dissertation for my graduate degree, where I came up with the idea to write a children's book. And so I wanted to focus on children's rights, specifically uh, the child's right to play, which is Article 31 of the UNCRC. And so that's how that came about. I just, it wasn't necessarily about um, 
publishing was more about creating this book. And then I realized the best way for me to out, get this out there as much as, or as quickly as possible would be to self-publish. Um, so that's how I got into self-publishing. Um, and, you know, with the internet, it makes it a bit more easy to do. Mm. Uh, but I also discovered it's not as easy to do because without the proper funding or not having the money um, to really go about it. And I was a broke um, uh, grad student. I didn't really have much <laughs> to, to, to offer to put this book together, but I made it happen yeah. slowly. Um, it was, it was a task. It was, it was a difficult task. It was a challenge, I would say. Uh, so I went into actually publishing and going and starting my own publishing company as uh, an individual or a sole proprietor as part of uh, the process of self-publishing so that I would be able to get more royalties out of it. Mm -hmm. However, what I also discovered is that in publishing, especially with authors of color and um, with stories of color, I discovered some problematic uh, facts. For instance, um, with uh, stories with uh, characters of color, often these stories are not written or by people of color. Uh, it's quite low, actually. Uh, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but uh, it's quite um, it's problematic how many books are not written by people of color. And when they are written by them, they are usually offered less money as an advance than their white counterparts. Often a lot of these uh, books are not telling authentic stories that are culturally based. They're just Covered, colored with brown skin. <laughs> so they are just stories that, you know, uh, could have easily been with a person who is non white or uh, even an animal, perhaps, uh, but is just given a brown faced character. So I was like, that's not okay. Um, I think I need to kind of dive into this a little bit better and see whether or not I can actually help this part of the industry. So I decided to actually make it where my publishing company is not just for me, that it will actually be uh, a company to actually help and branch out other authors of color so they have more opportunity to get their authentic stories told based on their own multicultural backgrounds and experiences. That's incredible, Anna. Oh, I'm so you. proud of you. <laughs> um, so you, your first book is Daffodil Gray and the Colorful Parade? No, my first book, which I have here, is oh. The Extraordinary Day of Daffodil oh, Gray. So this is the one, it's available on Amazon at the moment, but this was the book that I made when I was in Wales. And um, it's about a girl who, obviously a, a child of color with her cat tea cake. Uh, they are introduced to a friend and they realize this friend is really sad because she's not allowed to play on the playground because there's this boy on the playground that tell her tells her that she's not cool enough to play on the playground. So they have to confront this boy and let him know that that's not right and that's not okay. All children have the right to play. So uh, that's what this uh, book is about and how she does that is what's incredible. And I think, well, I know a lot of kids really enjoy uh, this book based on how the conflict resolution occurs. So, um, and it's all in prose. Uh, both of my books are poems. They are um, written with a rhyme scheme and um, obviously illustrated by me as well. So uh, very you fun. So write. many talents, Anna. Ah, <laughs> thank you. Thank An you. Illustrator, a writer, a poet. Yes. So what's the second one is Daffodil Gray and the Colorful Parade. That's right. right. So this is the second one, and that's available now on my website. Um, yeah. So this time. is. This is uh, also based off the UNCRC uh, articles 13 and 15, which uh, state that a child has a right to express themselves and to associate with other children. And uh, yeah, I did this while I, when I came back, um, I was like, I got such great feedback from my first book. And I was like, you know what? I think I can make this a series. I think this is something that needs to be serious because there's so many articles of that uh, yeah. convention. Uh, or that that document that I was just like, you know what, I could just continue and write about Daffodil. And I enjoyed doing my first book so much that I was just like, yeah, I'm just gonna continue doing this um, and just make it a series. So 
this is the second book of the series and I'm extremely proud of this as well. And um, she, this story is just about her and her cat Tea Cake. Tea Cake is back. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and they are invited to participate in a lovely colorful parade. Uh, however, there's uh, two twins that don't find the parade so fantastic and are trying to ruin it. And so they have to confront these twins and uh, convince them that actually having a parade that celebrates diversity and love uh, is actually fun and having friends that are different from you, it can be fun too. So that's what this book is about. Um, so this is a, this sounds like a great book to share with your kids nowadays because yes. there's a lot of division in yes. our country. So this yes. would be a great book to read with your children. Whoever has children. <laughs> <laughs> children or if you're an adult and you want to read it. I know some adults that love reading children's books as well. Um, but <laughs> yes, I, I'd like to think so. Well, from the feedback that I've received so far from this book, uh, the kids absolutely love it. And I am so excited to um, hear the stories that parents always tell me about the reactions that kids have with this book. It's often a book, uh, according to what I've been told, that kids ask for again for bed at bedtime because they enjoy reading it and they enjoy oh. what happens in the book i don't want to give it away but there's yeah. there's some fun parts of the book that the kids really enjoy that i've taken note but so bye. what other adventures will daffodil 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 right yeah like the flower the, the flower and to be honest uh how did i pick that because i think that's probably some people like well how, why is she daffodil why is the cat named tea cake um so as i said the first book i wrote in wales and in wales daffodil mm -hmm. is the flower of wales and um mm -hmm. and you see them everywhere to be honest it's it's a beautiful like i said it's a beautiful country nobody talks about wales when it comes to the uk but i love absolutely love wales um because people are super friendly and the the language, the Welsh language is extremely, it's um it's very sing-songy and it's a beautiful green country. Uh beautiful. So anyway, uh the daffodil is everywhere. You in the springtime it, it flourishes. And um as you can see, she's also wearing rain boots mm -hmm. because it often rains in Wales and that's why it's so green and, and lush, but it rains a lot in Wales. Ah. <laughs> so she's always wearing her wellies and uh, tea cake is actually the name of a popular, well, I guess over there it'd be, it's like a pastry, almost like what we would call a biscuit um, mm. in America, but, or like a scone, uh, it would be something like that and has like raisins in it. It's very popular in Wales. So um, I wanted her to, I wanted to give, to pay homage to Wales where- um, Your first book was born. Right, and it's like my second, my second home. I lived yeah. there for two and a half, half years. So, uh, so yeah, that's why uh, she is named what she's named, and the cat and such, and what she's wearing. And the yellow, the yellow dress is a daffodil color. So, ah. yeah, all of that. <laughs> so, what other adventures is she gonna go on with her friends? Um, so I am definitely looking at a few things. Um, I. Well, first of all, I like the title to rhyme. Uh, so Daffodil Gray, uh, something has to rhyme with gray. So <laughs> it's some type of day that Daffodil's gonna be on, but um, mm -hmm. it would be something involving uh, the articles of the UNCRC, the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child, and uh, just figuring out a way to make sure it incorporates um, Daffy helping someone and ensuring that their rights are respected. So um, can't tell you much, but there are definitely gonna be more adventures. I want at least six adventures to be included in the series. So, and then I have other series that I have in mind as well that I wanna work on, um, as well as doing, uh, writing some young adult books that I also have a lot of ideas, a lot of great books that I have um, ready to get printed and, and uh, published and share with the world. So I'm so uh, excited for them to be born. So we can. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> so once you're done with um, her story, her series, the six books, yeah, what do you see the future being? Do you want it to be in, on Disney Plus, like a cartoon or a movie or? Um, I definitely think a cartoon and animated um, series would be amazing to be honest uh, mm. 
that would be my next step. I also see the idea of um, merchandise, like toys, mm -hmm. uh, to oh, yeah. have a daffodil doll and have her tea cake cat on the side would be phenomenal. Yes. Um, so those are the two things that are just, I've always been on my mind from the very beginning when I wrote the, the first book. And um, I would love to see that come into fruition. So definitely. And how do you stay inspired during this trying times? How do you sit down and write? Because I feel oh. like during these times right now, a lot of us are struggling to just do anything creative. What do you do? Um, yeah, so yeah, it can be difficult, especially with so much that's going on and um, so many things that can kind of put a damper on your inspiration even. What I like to do is kind of switch up my routine. So um, I often take a walk outside Mm -hmm. um, I have a park, a local park that's like a mile down and or less than a mile and I'll go to the park and I'll just sit and, you know, just not have my phone, just sit and just take a moment to breathe and observe the space that I'm in, mm -hmm. uh, whether it be watching a squirrel, whether it be listening to the sound of the wind going through the trees. Sometimes you just need a moment to just quiet your mind. So I think meditation is great. Um, and just finding a way to get out of the space where you feel less inspiration. And then in that space, finding ways to be grateful for what you are experiencing in regards to um, life in general. Uh, I know that's very difficult. I know that's a heavy ask for a lot of people because there's been a lot of loss this year, um, but I think it's probably the most uh, efficient step or the most likely step to take uh, in regards to trying to be positive in this moment. Again, I know it's heavy. I am not um, oblivious to that fact and I have my own struggles <laughs> as a person, but I think just finding ways to be grateful and celebrate the wins that are occurring in your life. There are wins, even though it seems like there isn't, but there are wins, even the smallest wins. It could be having your favorite dinner. You know what I mean? Even if it's not like at a steakhouse or something of that nature, you it's just enjoying the small things that make you happy, the little joys, because they all accumulate to big joy and they can feel very big once you accumulate all of them and recognize all of them. Um, often I read, also, I also write in my journal, mm -hmm. whatever thoughts I need to like, just get out of my mind. If for instance, the weather is not great enough for me to go outside and just sit and kind of, you know, sit in my thoughts. Um, talking to family, sharing jokes, laughing. Um, and again, just finding the little joys, celebrating the wins and being grateful for even the losses, what lessons have you learned from that? What lessons are, you know, uh, teaching moments did you discover within those times that are not so joy joyful? Uh, I think that helps uh, a lot, a lot. And um, that's what I would recommend. Yeah, I agree. I like, it's hard. I know I can speak for myself that I always point out the negative. <laughs> You can you only focus on the negative, but there's like good stuff happening. Yeah. So once you I mean like you know what I woke up today. That's a good thing. I'm grateful that I woke up. Right. Exactly. I totally agree. I was gonna, and you can add joy to that too. Like, yeah. uh, for instance, you wake up in the morning. You're like, you know what? I'm gonna dance. You know what I mean? Just turn yes. on the radio and just have a dance moment with yourself. I have this uh, thing where I call it my, my minute of joy, where every time it's, it turns into um, 10, 15, cause that's my birthday, <laughs> whether it's 10, 15 in the morning or 10, 15 in the evening, I take that moment. If I catch it, I'm not like looking for it. I'm not like, yeah. when's 10, 15 coming? I'm more like, you know, it's, oh, it's 10, 15. I'll go ahead and just have my moment where I just start dancing. That was a great idea. <laughs> But it definitely just just brings the the endorphins and serotonin yeah. 
whatever into you know your mind it just gives you it just makes you feel so much better like just within that 60 seconds um it just suddenly just lifts my spirit completely so if you can find little ways to bring joy in your life i think that also helps it could be something as simple as a dance party in your room it can, you know what i mean i'm, I'm gonna start doing that at five yeah. ten no, 501 because <laughs> my birthday is 501 <laughs> we go i'll do it with you <laughs> so, oh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna text you right at 501 i'm dancing <laughs> it's great I, I i highly recommend that yeah so find joy you know to find things that make you joyful at the small things trust me it makes such a big difference so, that's great advice yeah. and you've been <laughs> writing since you were 10 I, I have yeah what type of things were you writing at 10 so at 10, I, I always wrote songs, right? It's mm. always been something that I really enjoyed writing um, since I was eight, actually. But at 10, um, it was a very pivotal moment because um, I was in fourth grade and we were studying ecosystems, particularly the desert. So there's like four classes and we had like four different ecosystems and our class was the desert. So we were uh, doing research on animals of the desert and so our project for the year, for the quarter, was for us to create a book about a desert animal, any desert animal. And we had a choice. We could do a picture book where you just, it's a nonfiction picture book. You have some pictures and you have like a fact on the bottom of the page. Or you can actually write a story, a fiction story about a desert animal. And I was like, well, the picture book, I don't feel like doing all that drawing. And I just thought it was boring. <laughs> <laughs> I just was like, I don't feel like doing that. But then I was like, oh, but then I have to do a fiction story. And then I was like, well, it might be fun. I think I'll try it. The book ended up being five chapters. And uh, it was called Selfish Sandfish, which is why my publishing company is called Sandfish Publishing, because it pays homage to that first book that ah. I wrote. Um, so it was about Sammy the Sandfish, who was very selfish. And he lives in the Saharan desert and he meets a dung beetle, which he tries to eat, but the dung beetle teaches him why he shouldn't be selfish. Um, and so he doesn't eat the beetle. And, uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, uh, it, it was a lovely story. Um, my teacher was highly impressed, Miss Purdy. Um, love her. She was my favorite teacher and encouraged me to write the story as well. She could see that I had the talent and I uh, got an A++ on that project. So <laughs> from there I realized, okay, this is the thing I like to do. I like to write, even though I you know, can be a little lazy about it, but yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, so much writing. But once I get into the groove, I am just, woo, I just take off. So um, yeah, so that's, that's, that was my first book. And I think my mother still has that book. I'm pretty sure she still has it somewhere. Are you, are you going to revamp it? Uh, if we can find it, we don't know where. <laughs> amongst the many memories and things that I have back at home but um I have definitely considered it since I now have a publishing company if we find that book I will definitely <laughs> publish it so um yeah and illustrate well, it and everything. what and illustrate it and you know because it, it you know it's going to be different obviously the illustration yeah. is be different now well I'm so excited for you Anna and I look forward to reading your books all of them and <laughs> turning them into movies uh you just give me the right the right away and i'll we'll make them into a movie or a tv series <laughs> so one last thing before we go because we've been talking for we could talk forever but we don't have yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so any advice for up-and-coming storytellers uh, for up-and-coming storytellers i would say first of all write whatever you have in your mind down uh, I meet a lot of people that say, oh, I have this great idea and I have this great story. And I was like, well, have you written it down? And I'm like, no, it's just like in my head though. And I'm like, well, then it doesn't mean anything if it's just mm -hmm. in your head. I mean, it's yours still because it's in your head. But I encourage you to write it down because one, when you write it down, it becomes, it, it becomes more visible. Like, oh, this is an actual story. I can really grow on this. Two, it allows you to figure out exactly what you want to do with that story. Like you could just have an idea, a basic like uh, 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 outline of what you were doing, but to actually create the 
characters, the conflict, the plot, the setting, all of those different areas, the, the conclusion of the story, you gotta write it down. You gotta just start writing down and then continue from there. And it just literally is about starting the story. Uh, once you start it, I think you really can't stop from writing it, in my opinion. You might, but I find it difficult to not write a story once I've started it. So I would say, uh, start the story one two make sure that you are being honest with yourself about what you're writing um be authentic and don't be afraid to include things that maybe not everyone's aware of but it's still very authentic to you and your experience because i think we need more of that yeah. you know it's like i said with publishing it's been certain people uh mm -hmm. certain not people of color that are telling our stories that needs to stop we need to make it where more people that look like us that have our stories and our backgrounds are telling our stories and so I be agree. yourself be authentic tell you know your story in your most authentic way and um don't be afraid to uh you're not to share your story with everyone else but once you you know get your story out there don't be afraid to make those next steps. Talk to people that you know are interested in helping you publish your story if you don't think you have what it takes to do it yourself. Um, Self-publishing is difficult. I'm not gonna pretend like it's not. It's easier than it was back in the day. Self-publishing has always existed. Uh, matter of fact, those who might know uh, the tale of Peter Rabbit, uh, that was written by Beatrix Potter. Beatrix Potter, uh, an English writer, she self-published her first book back in 1902, in early 1900s. Um, and she didn't have enough money to do it in color. Uh, she did the illustrations, she wrote it and illustrated it like I did. Um, she's my inspiration, by the way. And, uh, but she didn't have enough money to actually print it in color and the publishing houses didn't have it in the format that she wanted to do it. So she printed it herself with the money she had and it was black and white, but it did extremely well. And so she was able to take off and do more tales of other characters. Um, in her tale series, I guess I would call it. Um, but yeah, it's it's definitely something that I would say just start the story. Everything else will come into place. The desire for more, the inspiration for more and creating the story and the characters and such will definitely come. That's a great way to end our little chat. Thank <laughs> you so much. Uh, and if anyone's interested in buying Anna's books, you can find them on Amazon and where else? On my website. So my first book, The Extraordinary Day of Dr. Gray is on Amazon at the moment. Um, but my second book you can only find on my website at the moment, which is www.annagilchrist.com. And I'll insert it in here when I edit this. <laughs> and where can people find you on social media? So uh, yes, I'm on Instagram, Facebook, as well as Twitter. Uh, they are all Daffy and Friends, so D-A-F-F-I uh, and the word friends. Uh, with Instagram, there's a period in between each word, but with Facebook and Twitter, there is not. So Daffy and Friends um, for Instagram, a period, Daffy dot and dot friends. So you can find me there. Well, thank yeah. you so, that's so much, period. Anna. I'm so You're proud of you, welcome. and I am so excited for your future, and thank you for giving me your time today. Thank you so much for inviting me. I really appreciate it. All right, so go buy her book, go follow her on social media, and until the next chat. I don't know who's going to be, but I'll find <laughs> some. <laughs> Till the next chat. Till the next chat. <laughs>